Good evening to everyone. Thank God for this opportunity. Amen. Most holy God, we thank you for right now. We ask that you come and forgive us for our sins, creating us a clean heart, and the right spirit. Start your teaching anointing. Teach us your word. Help us to learn it, to live it in love with you. Receive your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to say, first of all, thank you for a very, very blessed uh, pastor's anniversary. Amen. It was uh, the best one ever. Amen. Uh, we got there, didn't we? Thank God that he got us there. Yeah. And it was, I mean, like, wow. I'm still saying, wow. So, and I thank you all for doing that for me. Thank God for using you to get us there. I thought it was awesome. Awesome. And I thought about what Crutcher preached to me. And it was a mountaintop experience. Yeah. Now we're down and back in the back. I was standing in the valley at least another year. Up and down. But I thank you for the man. It makes us appreciate the mountaintops. Amen. The thing about the valley is that we don't have to wait till we're on the mountain to praise and worship him. We can do it even in the valley because we know we won't be there long. Amen. He is Deacon Irish tonight. Checked on him today and I know his back has been bothered. I think he's going to a chiropractor every day. It's getting better. So, um, Second Corinthians. They say, meanwhile, back at the ranch, Second Corinthians, uh, letter of Paul to Corinthians. And we're not going to even get into all of that, but we know. It wasn't the second letter, it was actually the fourth letter. But um, we talked about last week about the, the, the treasure in the earthly vessels. We talked about the, that we should concentrate on the treasure and not so much the earthly vessel. Amen. As we hear it from our uh, prayer requests, um, the earthen vessel is going to break down no matter how well you try to keep it up. Now, that's not saying that we shouldn't try. Because if because if you don't try, you break down fast. I, mean, I hear people, I tell people all the time that you should exercise and try to stay in decent shape. And they say, oh, well, I got to leave here. Well, yeah, but, 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 but while you're here, what state will you be in? And so we have to be careful with that. Amen. Um, but, but, but it's about the treasure that's within us. And, and a lot of times we have to dig deep to find treasures. You gotta dig deep, right? And, and, and you notice that you have to search. So, so when I thought about it, I thought about uh, uh, the pirate's treasure, that, 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 that treasure everybody's after. There's this map and it's got that, that, where the treasure is, is buried, it's marked with an X. You, you gotta dig right like there, but, but, but you, 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 you go through a lot just, just getting there. You gotta do some sailing, and most of the time there's some dragons and some lions, and, and Satan is, is as a roaring lion. He's walking, going to and fro, seeking whomever. And he can divide because he wants us to, he wants to stop us from getting to our treasure. But our treasure it is not hidden in some ground, but God put it in us. He put it in, right. in weak, right. earthen right. vessel. He put the treasure. He, he thought so much of us that he hid his treasure in us. Not, not, not because he knew we would be so good, but to the contrary. He, he knew we would mess up. He knew we would fall short of his glory. He says, for all have sinned and fall short of what God expects and created us to be. All of us at one time or another have disappointed Daddy God. But he, he, he's so loving he, he didn't take the treasure away. He allowed us to keep the treasure. So, so we, we, we talked last week about that treasure mm -hmm. and, and how we have to find that treasure because in that treasure are the fruit of the Spirit. 
It's our roadmap. It's our guide. It's our life. Everything we need is in, in the treasure. Okay. So this week, uh, we're going to pull on a little bit. So we know we have a treasure. We know everybody has a treasure. So what does that say? That tells us that we are somebody. Right. That we are special. Because if we all have a treasure, that means we mean something to somebody. If, if, if the somebody is only the one who made us, that's more than enough. Mm -hmm. That's more than enough. So, so we have this treasure, 2 Corinthians 4th uh, chapter, verse 7. We have this treasure, it's in earthen vessels. But the reason he put it in this weak vessel is so that he can show how excellent his power is. Now that's deep right there. You, you ever wonder why you go through so much? You got a question? Yes, sir. You go back to where it the light. And when you break us, <laughs> his excellent power should show forth. Got to thinking on that today and start reading and you know me my mind when it gets to thinking on something hard on something just deep digging deep, 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 deep and and and, and it, it brought me to a point to say that um uh, there's gonna be some times that we must be broken so the treasure can we see? Uh, no one really sees the treasure when things are going well with us. No one sees the power of God in your life when everything's a bouquet of flowers. You know when they see God in you best is when you when you're pushing in a loved one and you're behind it. When the doctor has given you a report that you don't like. When things aren't going your way on the job, when things aren't going your way in your home, when your children are, are going astray, when you're going astray, when, when, when Satan is just trying to play with your mind, that's when his power, how many times that, that you, you, you have a, a good birthday, um, you have a good day, and, and you say, oh, nobody but God, child. Don't say that often. But when you come through something, y'all not talking to you tonight. When the doctor has said no, but somehow God has said yes, you go and tell the whole church, nobody but God. God says, I show up in your brokenness. You really want to know how tough your faith is? It has to be tried. You, 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 you can't brag on how good your faith is if you ain't been through nothing. How you know? How you know what type of faith you got? How you know? Oh, I, I got storm protection faith. But you ain't never been in a storm. And if you're in the storm and whining and crying all the time, where's that protection you're talking about? But in order for our faith to be seen and tested, we have to have uh, some broken experiences. And to the contrary, brokenness, bad things do happen to good people. I, I know that for a fact. Because, see, I know a man that was all good. And something really bad happened to him. That turned out for my good. Wow. Yeah, we, we complain about bad people, but all of us have had our time to be bad. And we still have some bad moments. Talk to me. But 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 bad things happen to good people. You, you, you can be doing what God called you to do and doing your best at it, and hell break out. And it ain't because you were where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's because God is saying, I need to use you. To show myself real to either you or somebody. 
I learned that when I'm going through things to ask questions, Lord, who are you trying to show this time, me or somebody else or both of us? Because I want to make sure that they see you real. How can I do that? Watch my mouth. Watch my power. I ain't going to tell you that I'll never power. I'm telling you, you'll never see it. Because if your pastor's pouting, what does it say? Hmm? Oh, pastor, I didn't know you was going through that. On purpose, you didn't know that I was going through that. Because if you know what I'm going through, you won't let me be pastor. You'll start messing up my call. Oh, don't bother, pastor. You know, you got some problems you're going through. That's not your decision. Your decision is to let pastor know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, he's human. He's human. I'm human. Jesus was human. He's human. But there's times that we have to. I, I will. I will tell you that I'm human too. But I'll never tell you that I'm only human. Because if I'm only human, I'm in trouble. I have to drop my humanness and get in my spirituality to overcome the storms. I only mess up. Worse when I'm trying to fight with the human body. Yeah. So, 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 so the treasure in us is so the excellent power of God may be seen and people may realize that what he went through, what she went through and got through, that was no doctor, no dentist, no lawyer, no judge, nobody but God. Bring it out. Let, let me tell you something about our God. Our God is a loving God. He is a faithful God. Uh, he, he's faithful even when we're unfaithful. Mm -hmm. He loves us when we were unlovable. And sometimes now we do unlovable things and He keep on loving us. He's a forgiving God. He, he forgives us. Even when we haven't forgiven ourselves, He's forgiven us. Huh? He's a provider. He's a protector. He does all that. But let me tell you something else about it. He's a warrior. He's a warrior. And he don't need our help. He, he, he only sends us to war so the people can see him better. God. It's amazing how he teaches lessons in war. He teaches the people that God is forming in any of your armies. He teaches the soldiers. He's saying, I don't need 300,000 of y'all. I just need 300. And then you ain't no need no sword or nothing like that. Just blow some horns. Gosh. But out of all those great attributes that we love about God, there's one we leave out. He's a jealous God. And he'll never be jealous. Jealous, gosh. Jealous will consume you if you let him. Jealous, jealous will make you lose your job. You, you can't even work for trying to check up on somebody. <laughs> Jealous will make you lead the line and it ain't your break time to open up the phone and try to find something. Jealous will make you tip around the corner on your cell phone. Jealous will make you get up at night and drive places, peeping and seeing without a flashlight. Hide trying to figure out. Jealous, jealous, jealous of making you go through your spouse and boyfriend, girlfriend's phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I brought it on me. <laughs> jealous of making you every time the phone ring be looking. And he said, brother, sister, so and so. God is a jealous God. God is a jealous God. Let me tell you something. When you kindle his jealousy, he hurts you. When you put something before him, let me tell you what he'll do. He'll either hurt the something or hurt you. Because he's not going to play second fiddle to anybody. And, and he reminds you, you, us, we, you know, the ones that said, Lord, if you save me, I'll put you number one. He said, okay, I want to be number one, not just on Sunday. I want to be number one seven days, 
24 hours a day. I want to always be. I, I don't want your job to get in front of me. Sometimes he'll let you keep the job. You just hate it and struggle through it. Sometimes he'll get you laid off. Sometimes he'll close the plant down. It just depends on how y'all yeah. act. I wish y'all talked to me. He says, I don't want your car in front of me. I don't care how new it is. He said, I can make it rain. I can make it. I can turn your new car into a limb. Because I'm God. I'm God. He says, and you get it, and then you can't come to church because you got to work overtime. To and then you're talking about what I bless you with. See, what I bless you with, you ain't got to work extra and cut my time off to keep. I'm teaching God. Right what, what God bless you with will enhance your relationship with him, not hinder it. I'm not going to talk to him now. If it hinders your relationship, it wasn't a blessing, it was a curse. I'm saying is you can never get ahead by putting God behind you. God is a jealous God. He wants number one in our life and he don't want us giving anybody else credit for what he does, especially ourselves. Mm. One phrase that God despises is, look what I've done. Mm. You. Mm. That, that, you. It is no way if you got to throw a thousand Bibles at me, you can do whatever you want. I will never say, oh, I, I can preach. But I can't. God can. I'm still that little broken project boy. And I got some news for you. You still got whatever broke you as a child. It's still some of that. Y'all don't talk to me. That's why God never called you wrong. That's why he always said, my children. We will never get wrong in God until we get to the other side. Hmm? We, 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 we still don't know his full name. We know Jehovah Jireh and we know the people, but he, he got a whole, he, I am. I am. I am. We, we're still finding out who our dad really is. He's unfolding more and more of him every day. So he says, I place this in you. And, and, and now tonight I want, I want to touch on this this here, there's no way we get through it. He starts to begin to talk about verse 8. We are troubled. And I, I want us to just think about trouble. When you think about trouble, no, 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 I, I ain't talking about an incident. So I ain't talking about getting in trouble. Right? Because if you get in trouble, uh, you, you can get out. Sometimes. But I'm talking about being troubled. Yeah, you see, you see he, he, here's what separates a lot of us. And I understand. I understand. You all were mostly nice and good as children. Every now and then, y'all got in a little trouble. I, on the other hand, and he loves me just as much as he loves you. I, on the other hand, when in and out of trouble, I was a troubled little boy. I hope y'all understand the difference. You, you were in trouble. You just done some mischievous things every now and then. You just broke the rule every now and then. I, I, I lived on the other side of the room. My mind thought about the wrong. I was troubled. And when you are Trouble. I, I want you to understand something. So you, those of you that just got in trouble, think about one time when you were in trouble, how you felt. Terrible feeling, huh? Terrible feeling. You, 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 you're in trouble and, 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 and you finally realize that what you did wasn't good and, 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 and you worry about the consequences. Are y'all going to talk to me? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I school call home. I, I'm just talking a little too much. What, whatever. Uh, I, but when I get home, I got to pay. And, and, and your mind was not uh, peaceful until you got whatever it was you were going to get. <laughs> you didn't want to whoop it, but since you was going to get it, can we just get it over with? Don't, don't let it just hang over my head. I, I, the food don't taste good. I can't run touchdowns. I ain't as fast as I used to be when I'm racing my friend because I'm thinking about that. 
butt whooping. I'm gonna say something. I'm thinking about your butt whooping. And, and, and I wish you just go and get it over with. So mama, don't talk, don't, 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 don't talk. You told daddy when he gone. And daddy said, you know what? I'm gonna get, and he worked it overtime, but I also know that his overtime, I'm gonna be asleep, but but, but he's gonna wake me up right on time and he's gonna be playing around because he already tired. And hey, mama, then what did he do on me? And and, and I can't say the mama told me what you did, so now daddy said, Oh, you more lying. So 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 but your mind is 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 troubled until you get over. A, a lot of times when I got in trouble. The, 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 the thing that racked my mind was not so much of what I did, but the time between seeing me where I am and seeing the judge. Because I, I was troubled. I don't know what the judge was going and, and once I got it, if, even if it was worse than I thought, I took an exhale because at least I know what I got to do to get out of trouble. So that's how you felt when you got in trouble. Me being a troubled young man, I felt that way all the time, every day. Woke up. But it's okay. Because just like God bless you to stop getting in your little trouble, or help you out of it every now and then, he, he got me out of being in trouble. Yeah. He, he, he did that. But, but, but I want us to view trouble. Because as Christians, Paul says that we are troubled on every side. Now y'all don't talk to me tonight. Y'all don't talk. If y'all don't talk to me tonight, I'm gonna get journals and make y'all write in journals for me. And turn the journals in it to you. I just want you to talk to me. You know what? Don't, don't be personal, but 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 tell me some things. Listen, he says troubled on every side. Have you ever felt like that you had no place to rest? Everywhere you went, it was something. I'm talking about that's trouble. That's trouble. That it's trouble. It's trouble when you got trouble on your job. And you, normally you say, if I just get home. But if you got trouble at home, trouble on your job, free in trouble. What other type of trouble? You money trouble. Job trouble. Then I got trouble getting to work. I got trouble on the job. I got trouble getting to the job. I got trouble getting to the job that troubles me. I got trouble getting home. Huh? I, I, I'm so tired of picking me up. I got trouble with the people picking me up. The ones picking me up, I know they really don't like me. They, they, they tell everybody in the plan, everybody in the end, that I ain't gonna pick them up tomorrow. Because I got money trouble and they want some gas money, even though they got to come by my house. I wish y'all talked to me. Even though they got to come by my house to go to work, they don't want me riding unless I give them some money. But I got money too. I got telephone trouble. When I can't get a connection, it's, it's for calling about their money because I got money too. Paul says, We are troubled. Oh man, wait, y'all see, y'all still ain't talking to me. And, and to top it all off, Dick. Wait a minute. So, so I got. Job trouble, I got home trouble, I got children trouble, I, I got uh, transportation trouble, I got money trouble, and I even got church trouble. I can't even rest on Sunday because the folk at church trouble me too. I don't know where to turn. I don't know where to turn. Trouble got me boxed in. Paul says we, we are not we were, I need y'all to read this now. Not we were, we are troubled. I got school trouble and undergraduate. The folks that took prayer out of school, and I know that it took prayer to get me through school, and that they can't even do what got me through. I need y'all to talk to me. I'm talking about trouble. 
trouble on every side. The doctor says my physical ain't like it ought to be. I got body trouble now. I my prescription going out. My eyes get worse. I got eye trouble now. I don't realize that these children got it. Got back trouble, got knee trouble. We are troubled. So 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 I can't. So when you are boxed in, you really can't handle it. You're overwhelmed. Because you're not used to so much trouble. I wish I had her here today if my aunt from Athens, uh, Bernie and Proud was here, she would say, trouble's in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Lay awake and, and lay, lay awake and I, you know what she was telling me? I got sleep trouble. God. Can't even rest. Lay awake and so, so, so listen, it, it overwhelms you. You don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do. You, gosh. You said, oh, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Now nah, the trouble can't be and you're too stressed. To realize you see your blessing. See, see y'all like the cliches, but yeah, you blessed, you too blessed to be stressed, but guess what? It don't stop you from getting stressed. I, I just be real since y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I just talk to y'all. I'm blessed, I'm still blessed, but I get stressed in my bless. Because I realize something. It takes work to keep blessings. If you got a blessing that you ain't got the work to keep, it ain't no blessing. It's a blessing that you got it, but you got to work to keep it. You didn't deserve it, but since he gave it to you. But, so you, you tend to get overwhelmed. But the flippies in the world, they tend to be right at home. Gosh, wait, 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 don't, don't get mad at me now. Earlier when I said y'all, you know, nice, y'all just got in a little trouble every now and then. He was like, yeah, yeah. And I said, I was a trouble for him. But now that I'm maturing in the Lord and I'm troubled on every side where you don't know what to do, I'm saying, oh, well, I'm used to it. I grew up troubled. I had stuff happen to me was out of my control to trouble me. So now, what tip your scale over? It's just a half cup for me. Yeah, I, 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 I'm like Paul. I understand what it's like to be in the projects and, and have to share your genes. I know how it is to be without. See, Paul says, I've learned to be content. Well, I have or I have not. I'm content. I understand that. Oh yeah, I, I it's pretty good for Pastor right now. But I, but I'm always saying, Pastor, why are you doing that? Cause I don't never know when it ain't gonna be pretty good for Pastor. I, I, I still ride as long as I can without turning my AC on in the summertime because I don't know if it ever go out. You crazy? You got an AC and won't turn it on. You crazy, you got one to turn it on all the time. And that's why you sweat out your clothes when it breaks it. Because you ain't oh, I can't handle this heat. You, you mean you can't handle it no more. You grew up in the heat, but they didn't have AC. Like y'all that's amazing to me. How people say, I can't handle that after let the window now. What about when your car did when they didn't make them with AC? And and not only did them, you had to get the window down, you didn't have no button to get it down for you. You had to work. Can't get nothing. I'll be the sweat out. Yeah. Lord, the AC that went out at your church. I ain't going. They got the AC fixed yet. Well, kill me in the wintertime. They got the heat fixed yet. I ain't going up in there and be cold. If you come in praising and shouting, you won't be cold. Only cold folks are the ones that don't move.
trouble. We live in a world that's troubled. If you would just be real with yourself, no matter how saved we are, there's still some things that box us in and troubles us. That's why I say we. We are troubled on every side. We need to be careful. We need to be careful. Watch it, watch it. Watch it, watch it. What are some things that's so offensive? Troubled. And I know the, the church is troubled because the church does not know how to fully separate from the world. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to get people that's tired of the world in church because when they come to church, they say, I see worldly things. I see worldly attitudes. They, they talk about me out there. Well, I need to come here with y'all and, and, and be transparent for y'all to have your water. You, you wonder why people don't talk to you? They don't trust you. Hello, somebody. I know what you're saying, there's some hard spots there. Uh, uh, but, but listen, trouble, I, I, I know we're trouble because there's an academic of suicides. Mm-hmm. With church leaders, right. church people, people been in church all their lives are committing suicide because they are trouble. And you have some things that trouble you. I have some things that trouble me. Listen, some, some of the trouble is I've worked all my life. And I can't retire because I can't. Or my body's ready. I'm ready. But I, 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 I'm, I'm the right age. I just can't afford it. I can't afford the insurance. I can't afford it. I, I, I thought I had a house paid off of it. And I wonder, Lord, will, will I work to retire before I die? I don't want to leave here. I want to talk, I want to talk to some people. I want us to be real. Oh, Lord, Lord, I raised that child. I made some mistakes. But, but I didn't know there were mistakes back then. But I did the best. Will they ever come around and appreciate what's going to happen when they realize that I. Can I just be real? What's going what's gonna happen when they realize I just made it look easy? I caught hell. I, I made it look easy so they wouldn't be wary. And me making it look easy made them take for granted that it was easy. And they thought I could do more. And I like to have been lost my mind. I wish y'all talk to me. I need to talk to some people that's real and know that we are in trouble. Yes. yes. Oh, my grandbabies. Gosh. And, and I got my grandbabies, and I know that my babies ain't ready to take care of babies. So now I got to take care of babies and grandbabies. I, I'm still worried about you. You you haven't put your toys away. And now there's more toys. And I need somebody to trouble. I, I, I wish I could say, Lord, if you come get me tonight, I'm okay, but I just sure my kids will be all right. I ain't just kidding. I, I'm talking about trouble. Trouble. And then I got to send them somewhere that they unprotected and things are happening in school that was unheard of in my day. And in the work, they can't go hang out. And babies are getting kidnapped and found in a dumpster there, three year olds. We, we troubled. It's my shoulder, but I got hooked up with medicine. Trouble! Don't act like you don't know trouble. 
I didn't mean to get hooked on a hydrocodone, did you? But I just, I just, and then you're talking about me, but I'm just trying to get it. I'm just we are troubled. Troubled. Trouble. What are some synonyms for trouble? Mine is hard pressed. You just, gosh, but trouble just keep pressing you. Right? When you think you just you get your head out, you have to duck it back in. Because a, a blade coming down to chop it out. The only reason trouble let it come out is to do. Huh? I, I found somebody I could talk to. Gosh. But they really wouldn't concern with my trouble. They just wanted something from me. And once they got what they wanted from me, and I'm thinking they care about me. They go on, they've added even more trouble to my trouble. I wish I'd never trusted them. I wish I gosh, Simpson said, I wish I would have never laid out. Come on, talk to me. Simpson was troubled. The Bible says he was just looking for a place. I ain't the only one that laid my head in the wrong way. Come on, I might be the only one admit it, but I ain't gonna have done it. Are y'all all right? Huh? So, 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 guys, just, 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 just in trouble. What do you do? The Paul says we are hard grits, troubled, we're anxious, we're stressed out, we get trouble. Trouble is, trouble is. Trouble is hell. Huh? You ever get out of trouble just to fall back in more trouble? You, you ever double up on your trouble? You know, go through it one time and it don't work and you know you're not supposed to be there, but you get lonely and go back and I wish I had some real people to talk to. And the next time you went in, it was deeper than the last time. And if you stayed too long, you said, and it just keep getting worse and worse because I'm in trouble will block your blessings. Let me tell you why. Trouble will have you trying to concentrate on the preacher. A trouble just to say, I, you just want to concentrate. You, you, you ever felt all right and said, Well, I'm going to be all right. Just get me some sleep and I'll sleep this trouble away. And, 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 and you get to go to sleep, but trouble give you dreams. I'm nightmares. See, 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 I know we're troubled because, gosh, let's just talk. We say we come to church every Sunday to praise Him, but that trouble just comes sometimes. It, it ain't so much that we come to praise. We got some trouble before we give it. We got some stuff we need to leave. I'm gonna praise Him, but I found out something that I have a whole front seat full of praise, but I got a truck of trouble. Y'all won't help me. And I don't pop the trunk when trouble get out of the way. And trouble beat me in the church. Sometimes trouble is you frowning at me. Because I got my, 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 my coat dirty on the way. And you just add to my trouble. 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 I just talked to him and I'm almost lost. I'm sick. Yeah, I had a woman with the issue of blood talking about She says, I had 12 long years of trouble. I want you to watch this because it's going to lead to what Paul says next. And oftentimes, the only way to get out of trouble is to go through more trouble to get out. She, she, she's already been troubled for 12 long years. 
Mother, she got money problems. Money trouble. Because the Bible says she had given all that. Got nothing else. I'm bleeding for 12 years straight. I got to be anemic. I can't have energy. Because the energy is in my iron, in my blood, and in my bleeding. I can't work. I wish I would go and help me. Can't work. Use all the money trying to get well, and, and instead of getting better, gosh, what do you do when you're praying hard, and, and instead of trouble getting better, more trouble comes? Come get Job. Gosh, and she says, she says, so after 12, oh, you six, six, see, y'all picture her wrong. I know you, you, you picture this woman in this nice dress looking for Jesus. I don't. I picture a woman, I, I, I tell you what, I believe that she had help just getting to the end of his gone. I believe that she might have touched his shoulder, but she was so weak she had to crawl. Uh, what? I, I believe Rosie Parks had him sitting there in front. I believe she was so tired and broke down that she said, I just can't make it to the back of the day. And then Jesus showed up. And then Jesus showed up. I believe mean, this woman was raggedy. See how much she had on the dress? See how much she could put? I thought you, and, and she ain't going away. You know how it is when you're stuck in the house, you wear that same old woman. Mm -hmm. I, 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 think, I think that one day she said, you know what? If I don't see Jesus, I'm going to die in my trouble. I believe that's what she said. And I believe that she got up and, and, and it fell back down because she was so Let me tell you about trouble. When you really want to get out, I mean, if she said, you know what? I ain't going to change clothes because I ain't got nothing to change into. All right, all right. I ain't got nothing to change into. I ain't got the energy if I had something to change into. And I ain't worried about how I smell. I ain't got the energy to put on my makeup. And I ain't got no makeup anyway. I got just enough energy left to crawl and touch the hem. It's the lowest thing. I believe that she crawled through the crowd. But wait, it was enough trouble getting there. When she got there, more trouble. A crowd. Wait, mother, wait. One of my synonyms for trouble is hard press. So the crowd was Jesus' trouble. The Bible says the crowd had pressed in. I wish I had some Bible readers here tonight. So the crowd was his trouble. Why were they his trouble? They were there for miracles, but not for the master. They were using him. Remember I told you sometimes some people come in and act like they want to help you, but they really want to help get something from you. They get the last little bit. And the Bible says that she, she said, I can't let trouble stop me from getting out of my trouble. I got enough trouble on me, but if I have to stoop and get this other trouble to touch the hem of his gun, I'm coming out of this trouble. She had to get even lower than she was. Wait. I hear antidote for trouble. Humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And wait, I might not come out as quick as you want me to. Countless. But in due time, he will exalt me. And not faith. So, so process it. We are troubled on every side. Come. Oh, Deacon JW. If he left me in my trouble, I'd be best trouble. He says, no, we're troubled on every side, yet we're not distressed. 
We ain't crushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happy. We, we all agree that the trouble. Yeah. Let me tell you about, about, about how heavy it is. It's so heavy because it's personal. It, you, you can't trouble me with things that's not personal. You, you can't trouble me about that jacket over there. I don't care about that jacket over there. You can cut it up, rip it up all you want to. That ain't going to trouble me. I ain't going to think no more about it. I don't think about it. I got another one at home. The closet I'm going to get to. But when you, when, you, when you start messing with my kids, or, or when you start, it, it, it's got to be something personal. It's got to be personal, right? And it weighs heavy on me. It's, it's hard pressing me. But that's why, because it's personal, my trouble look light to you. Amen. And because some of your trouble look light to me, oh, that's easy. Yeah, it's easy for you because it ain't your personal trouble. Yeah, yeah let, 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 let me help you understand it. It's easy for me to say, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see why y'all eat all them sweets in, at night knowing, you know, you, you don't have Probably at all, in some certain areas, you're going to be too heavy. That's easy for me, right? Because I eat candy all night and my metabolism is so high, I don't have your trouble. Oh. But if you say, wait, I'm faster, I don't see why you, you have a problem eating at McDonald's and fried food and stuff because my cholesterol, I don't have no Personal now. Trouble's personal. Yeah. Trouble's personal. Your personal trouble is not somebody else's personal trouble. It's yours. It's your personal. So Paul says that we have trouble on every side, but we're not crushed. Mm -hmm. right. Hope. Yeah. We're, 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 we're not crushed. So, so I got to thinking, and a lot of times, when I'm almost at the end, or I feel I'm at the end, I have this saying, I say, you probably don't say it, but it's high now, I'm at the end of my rope. You ever get at the end of the rope? In a rope, we don't get a hang. But God gave me something. He says, right here, he gave me this. He says, this is what I meant when Paul, I used Paul to tell you this. He says, you know how you say that you're always at the end of your rope and get to the end of the rope? I said, yes, Lord. He says, yeah, you can be at the end of your rope, but you're never at the end of your hope. I started to tell my office of that work when he came in. He says, you can get to the end of your rope because it's your rope. But, but, but it ain't your hope. I'm your hope. You will never get to the end. No matter what people say, people can say, oh, he ain't coming out of this one. My hope is built. Uh, it, oh, oh, it, it, it just be real. There's a whole lot of things I got myself into when only Jesus could get me out of life. Of course, y'all talk to him. I, I, I got myself in the streets, but only Jesus. I still like to gamble. Only Jesus got me out of here. I, I ain't talking about just gambling a little bit. I'm talking about checks for cars. Gamble, yeah, that's gambling. See, see, gambling to me ain't I got a hundred dollars and I bet five. What's the gamble? I got ninety-five if I lose that. That ain't no gamble to me. Gambling to me is I got 500 and I got a utility bill and car no do and they sell money. And I'm taking a chance on I'm, I'm either going home with a thousand or I'm going home with zero. That's gambling to a pastor. That's gambling. See, 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 see. Gambling to me is hell or hell. I don't gamble with my son. That's the gamble. That, that's the gamble. So, 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 see how y'all said, oh, no, I'm not pastor. See, that was pastor's trouble. That was pastor's trouble. Yeah, that, that was pastor's trouble. And you know when pastor was in trouble, because either pastor was real sharp and had a whole lot, or pastor was about naked and didn't have money. 
I want to thank God. Oh, he ain't bringing nothing home tonight, but it's pride. <laughs> and it don't look too good. But guess what? I just had a bad night Thursday. Check Friday. Yeah. I and I don't want just your check Friday. I want what I'm not Thursday and Tuesday. Are y'all all right? Yes, I'm not. And let me tell you something. As Christians, it should be all or nothing. What Paul is saying is, although we, listen, Paul painted a picture that I didn't like at first. Yes, I'm troubled on every side. So Paul, you he said, he says, and I ain't telling you you're going to get out. I'm just telling you you will never be crushed. I'm saying you might go home troubled, but he will never let it crush you. You know what Paul is saying? He said what y'all like to say, but he's put it in real terms. He won't put more on you. He'll put enough on you that you think you can't make it, but you'll still be making it while you think you can. He'll put enough on you where you think you ain't gonna make it, but you'll still be making it while you think. Paul says that we are troubled on every side, yet we are not crushed. We're not crushed. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't finish school. Trouble. Yeah. But he got me a job that I suppose I had a degree to get, but I ain't crushed. I ain't in my Lexus, but my soul doing the job. Gosh. Well, you, you, you got soul payment troubles. I ain't crushed. If I ran out there and got me a Lexus, I would be. Come on, talk to me. Sometimes we crush ourselves trying to impress people. Sometimes we bring trouble on us trying to impress other people. This is some trouble. But I ain't crushed. You, 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 you ever look back and just marvel at how it brought you? Listen, listen, listen. I'm closing. I'm closing. I know I wouldn't get fun. I'm closing. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you, you know. You didn't care what the people said. You know, the people said you ain't gonna make it. And it, it bothered you when you were younger, when you were immature. And then you don't care what nobody said. You know, you tell me, you pay my bills. Talk to me. I won't like what you wear. You ain't buying my clothes. I tell you what, you start buying them, you, you buy me what you like, I wear. Well, you, you, you ought to have a better car than that. Buy me one. I'll drive. You pay for what I, I promise you. I, 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 I tell you, what, you look, look here. You get me a big ugly car that you think so good and new. That's the drive. I, I put past the tag on there and everything. I promise you. But when you mature, you don't care. As a matter of fact, trouble minded people like me, I, I take the negative you say about me, that boy, that boy ain't gonna make it. You know what happened to his parents, and look at him, man, he just trolled and he, he don't hang around me, he ain't gonna make it. They, they, they said, he, he won't finish school, he didn't got suspended too many times, and he might as well just get his GED. And, and you know, I was on my way, I, I, I gotta tell you this, it's true, I was on my way to get, I made up in my mind, I said, I was gonna get my GED, I didn't because I'm a year and a half behind now because I've been suspended. I'm on AV on the road. I'm a year and a half behind because I've been suspended. Oh, no. Okay. And I said, I'm just going to go and get my GED. You know, and I'm on my way to get it. And somebody said, I, I knew you I, you. I knew you would make it. I knew you would get your diploma. You might want to go and get your GED. I turned around. I said, I appreciate you. It encouraged me. I went back and got walked walk across that stage. And, and a lot of people said, not for me. But I was looking for that one that said, I just I just I just I just I just point the point didn't mean nothing to me. It's just what they said pushed me to get it. Didn't mean nothing to me because I was ever two at the time. I just I could have threw the diploma and said, here, put that on the wood dress. Remind me, don't doubt me. I was glad I kept on the I said, look at God. So when you mature, you don't care what people think. But 
real trouble for not being crushed will remind you of when you thought you were making it. I have doubted myself quite a few times. Mm -hmm. I, I, and it, we're just the people. I didn't care when the people said, well, you're going to be dead or in prison before you're 21. That didn't bother me. I, 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 knew, I knew the force of folk in prison already. <laughs> and if I was dead, I mean, dead don't know dead. I, I wouldn't know I was dead. You <laughs> probably talk to me. The Bible says, see, I already read the Bible. The Bible says there's no more members of men that's dead. They don't remember anything that happened on earth. How would they be rested? Yeah, how would you be rested? Man, that's a lot. I see them over here asking the food. They bother me. One day, I said to myself, boy, if you don't change, you, you ain't gonna live much longer. Or you're gonna live like an animal in a cage. We get to the point when trouble makes us look at ourselves and say, and then trouble says, you might as well keep going now because look how far you came. You can't get back. And then I need to talk to some real people, some people that have come out of some things. Isn't it amazing? And on your way out, Satan pulls his biggest, biggest magnet out to try to suck you back. I, I remember coming out the streets. I had to swallow some stuff. I prayed. And I said, uh oh, uh, uh, Lord, I don't ever get away with that. They know, no, Lord said, oh, yeah. If you want out, you have to swallow that. I said, well, they gonna, my reputation, they're going to be saying how they got soft and all that. He says, you have. I soften your heart, so you, you, you got a single saying, Oh, boy, you ain't gonna know you ain't. And then the crowd, you, I, I stayed away a little while and they called, man, they out here talking bad about you. I told them, some of my so called friends, I told them you weren't gonna take that. I told them, Give you a minute. You, you, you gonna, you gonna. <laughs> and that was tempting me to, because I could fix it. The wrong way, but I can fix it. I can I tell y'all a secret before we go. Y'all talk to me out y'all neck sideways sometime too. And in my fleshly mind, I'd be like, Lord, I can really fix them now. Oh, come on, talk to me. We all revert sometimes. The, the mind reverts sometimes. I said, then, Lord, I can I can shut them up from talking about me. Lord said, No, you can't. You're their pastor. You, you set the example. And press. That, that press me. And, 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 and when you have no outlet with trouble, you end up dumping it on some innocent bystander. Gosh. But I'm going to go to with hope. Paul says, though, though we're boxed in with trouble, though it's weighing heavy on us. God won't let it crush us. He knows how much we can bear. He knows. He, he, he knows. Look at your neighbor and say, he knows. He knows. Look at your neighbor and say, but the trouble is, I don't. Gosh, he knows how much I can bear. He'll never put more on me than I can bear. But my ignorant bald head acorn self don't know how much I can bear. And I jump in and put too much on me. And then go to him and say, Lord, I thought you. He says, I didn't put that on you. You went and got it. Trust him because even though we're troubled, he won't let us. He won't let it. He, 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 he handles brokenness. He, he, listen, Jesus will break you, but he'll never crush you. Because when you're broken, you can be fixed to be strong. Listen, 
if, if you got a nice piece of china you really like, you drop it and you break it. You can take it to some places and they can fix it and it'll never look like it was ever broken. They got some stuff now they can put one little drop of glue and form that thing and re put, put that, uh, 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 that glaze back on it. Yeah, it's, he says, when we've been broken, the body wants to put us back together. But if you crush that, I can tell them. I mean, it fall and it break, and, and then somebody step on it and crush it into little bitty pieces. No. No. It's a little bit trouble. Though we're broken, we're never crushed. We'll never be like Humpty Dumpty. He'll put us back together. Are there any questions? We're going to be stuck here. But, but, but we're stuck in a good place. Yeah. Any questions? If not, we will go on our homework. Quiz number five. I couldn't see that's some good stuff. I was proud of that. So I'm around that office today. Keys probably found some. Anybody need one? I got a key, a couple of things. Hey. All right, let's go over this here. Quiz number five. Everybody ready? We're on five, right? Mm -hmm. When did Jesus say that his blood was poured out for the forgiveness of sin? Mm -hmm. Look. Yeah, during the last supper. Not after. He says, this, this is my blood. Which is poured for you. Number two. Everybody got that? Matthew 26 and 28. Fill in the missing words from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If Christ has not raised, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is, and you are still in your, if Christ be not raised. Wow. So, true or false? No event in ancient history, no event ever in ancient history is well documented as Jesus' death and resurrection. Well documented. It's true. It's true. You, you, you know why it's true? Every country know why. It's been documented in every language. Who said to Jesus, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will? Peter said, but not only Peter, I said to him. He said, oh, I don't care who else follow you, I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. And when so and so don't follow you, you start looking around saying, You ain't going in. I was going to go, but you ain't going. Y'all ever do that? Lord, I, I, whatever you tell me to go, I go. He told you to go to the program. Who you don't know ride, he said, I don't think I'm going to make it this time. He said, Well, I might not go either. You ain't going because you know we always go together. What happens if you come back and y'all ain't together? I guess you're going to wait. I got news for you. It don't matter if you're together or not. I heard him say two will be on the house topic. Two will be in the bed. Two will be in the field. He said, I'll take one of them. He said, someone's going to be in conversation and, and, and going to ask a question and look around. The other name will be that answer. They go. That's tough. Can you imagine walking somewhere holding hands and next thing you know? Ooh, wow. Yeah, come go with me. Well, it depends on where you're going. Uh, we ain't going up now. You have it. I'm floating. <laughs> All right. He, he says, number six, name one of the two friends. One of the two friends. All right, so I know, I know, okay, true, false. Jesus said to Peter, before the hour of hoops, you will disown me three times. Well, what did he say? That's right. That's right. Now, can I go to six? Name one of the two friends who invited a stranger to a meal 
and found out it was the risen Jesus. Who's the other? We don't know, do we? We don't know. We don't know. He was a disciple, but we don't know who he was. Right? Where did we find that? That's right. All the way down to 30, right? Luke 24 and 18. Yep. Bills. Number seven. When did Judas, where did Judas fling the money he had been given to betray Jesus? In the temple. Matthew 27 and 5. Number eight. Who picked up the money Judas returned? He did? That's right. That's right. Chief priest picked it up. Number nine. Yeah, chief priest picked it up. He tried to take it back. That, that, they were the ones after Jesus, remember? The Jewish leaders, the chief priests. He was putting them out of business. Y'all need to be praying for priests? And he threw it down in the temple and the chief priest got it. Mm -hmm. Number nine, what name was given to the field bought with the money Judas returned? That's what it was given to. What was it called before then? Potter's field. Matthew 27 and 7 and 8. Number 10, which Old Testament book has a verse in it which is taken as a Masonic prophecy about lots being cast for Jesus' clothes? Yeah, David is always talking about it. Uh, number 11, which prisoner was released instead of Jesus at the Passover festival? Barabbas, Luke 23 and 18, Mark 15 and 7 through 11. Got it? That's correct. 12, true or false, Jesus' body was placed in a new tomb. Whose tomb was it? Yeah. Brand new. Brand new. All right. Matthew 27 and, and 60. That's right. 13. What did the crowd say when Pilate asked them what he should do? What then shall we do with Jesus? What did they say? Who talked the crowd into saying it? Who talked to me? Somebody talked to me. Who talked to me? We're going to do a study on I tell you what, go to uh, go to Matthew 27 and, and, and maybe 20. Start at 20. Matthew 27 and 20. We give y'all some answers and some stuff we gotta talk about. Break it down there, girl. I love you go. <laughs> Not right now, okay. Keep on what what is saying is saying anything yet. I mean, let's get my mind. What, what is it saying on 27 and, and 20? What, how does it start? All right. So who talked him into it? Chief priest and the, and the, and the huh? Chief priest and the elders. The rabbi, yeah, chief priest and the elders talked the people into saying, y'all get Barabbas and crucify Jesus. Well, you mad at him? You looking like you mad at him? Oh, no. I was a little mad with him until I realized I was in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, the, the chief priests and the elders talked to me into doing that. The church people, listen, listen, understand this right here. The church people had the problem with Jesus. It was the, the multitude liked him, but the church people had a problem with him. How do you think they persuaded the people to go against him? Hey, we're gonna lower your taxes. We're gonna, you know, you know how these folks running for president now to fool y'all, go along with them. That's how they fool me. Yeah, lower taxes, better job. Oh, we're gonna fix your neighborhoods. We're gonna. Which one of them fix y'all neighborhoods? They ain't been to mine yet. Huh? Oh, he's such a good president. He wouldn't even know you if he saw you. All right, talk to me. Uh, why? Number 14, right? Why did Jesus' disciples meet in a locked room after his death? Um, for fear of the Jews. John 20 and 19. Here's a good one. What was the first thing that happened to Jesus after he was condemned to death? What? What? 
I heard somebody said removed his clothes, stripped him, and, and what with him. Yeah, they flogged him. Yeah, the first thing they did was flog him. And, and here's the question. Here's the thing. First lady helped me with that today. Um, but she was like, she was sad. It's okay. Who flogged him? Who whipped him? The soldiers? Why says the priests? Uh, who? You don't be surprised. Let's go to uh, Matthew, Matthew 27 and 22. Somebody get that and start reading for me. Stand up and read that for me. Slow. Go, go slow. Don't go real fast. Because it's going to amaze you. 27 and 22. What shall I do? Paul washes his hands. But this it has all the people and said, This blood be on us. The people said, Okay, Father, wash your hands with it. Let his blood be on us. And on our children. Now listen, but watch what's happened next. He released the rabbits. When who scores him? Yeah, when he no Pilate whooped Jesus. It was his job. He washed his hands. Turn to John. Turn to John 19 and 1. If you don't believe it, turn to John. Somebody hear up. John 19 and 1. That's the same thing. First said she was crying. But listen. Who got John 19 and 1? Come on, mother. Real slow for me. That's a bad, huh? Who did? Then Pilate and scorched. He, he had to whoop it. It was his job. Even though he said, even though his wife had said, you read Mark, Mark says his wife told him don't have nothing to do with it, and he washed his hand, but he Pilot. Y'all learn something. Pilot would before anything else happened, after they, after the verdict came in. But wait, don't be too mad at Pilot. Let me tell you who Pilot was. Pilot was the man that after the judge said guilty. Death sentence. He was the man they paid to flip the switch on the electric chair. His hands were tied. He was the man they paid to put the legal injection. His hands were tied. He, 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 his hands were tied. That's why Jesus told Pilate, I, I got to do a lesson on that. You remember when, when, when God says, I got power to let you. He says, no, my dad gave me that power. He says, as a matter of fact, it's the blood ain't going to be on your hands. It's going to be on your feet. And what did Pilate say? Pilate says, no, I'm washing my hands. And it's blood. They said, let the blood be on us. And I too. And let me tell you something. That sounds bad, don't you? I thank God that he let the blood be on us and our children. Because his blood is the Holy Spirit. It sounded cool at first. No, let the blood be on us and our children. Jesus was like, yeah, because it's going to save you. That's why he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The blood was working on them. They were killing him, and the blood was working. I, I, I got upset too, and I said, all these people so mean to my let the blood be on us and our children. But if it had not, we wouldn't be saved. That's a good one. All right, we're going to have our announcements. I'm going to pass out number six.